Have you ever noticed that a lot of people will move their mouths endlessly, and yet it seems like they're never really saying anything? You know, I've been wondering more and more recently about the validity of genuine character that some extroverts have, because it seems to be me that a lot of extroverts have this semblance of disingenuous qualities to them all the time. And it's almost like they're always trying to put on a mask. And, you know, this has come to my attention because multiple people have reached out to me that are in the school community that we have, the Regal Change Academy, about this kind of topic. And there's a lot of different things I want to go into today, but uh, you, we got to start somewhere. And it starts with the fakeness of, of reality. It starts with the fakeness that people are putting on. It starts with the masks. It starts with the lies. It starts with the deflection and the complete neglect of acknowledging the truth of the matter or the situation. And, uh, you know, somebody's got to bring the pain. And I'm going to be doing that here in this video. And I don't necessarily like being that guy. I don't like being the guy that is is persecuted for righteousness sake necessarily, but I'd rather have the truth on my side and be standing with Jesus than to be on any other team ever. Because I know that in the long term reality, even though I may not understand the factors of what is being played out, what I do understand is that my faith has never really led me astray. And this just goes to show how, how little people have faith anymore. People don't want to work together. People don't want to unify. And people are scared to unify, even. There's, there's almost a, a fear of being who you are. <laughs> it's because so many people are just so fucking fake. They're just so fake. And it is ridiculous to see how many people out here are putting on a show for people, like with their clients that they work with or with, with, the, uh, with their friends or even their family. They're just putting on a show when in the other room or behind closed doors, they've got something completely different to say. You know, I'll never forget how one of the last few times that I was with my family all together, and there's a lot of my family that I'm just not in contact with anymore. In fact, most of them at this point. And the reason that I'm not is because I saw what, our own flesh and blood is willing to do to each other. And this might be something that's similar with you, whoever's watching this. You might have thought in the past that your brother, your sister, your aunts, or your uncles, whoever it is, was there for you. And they said that they were going to be there for you. But when you needed them most, instead of helping you out and picking you up, what did they do? They stomped you further into the ground because they knew that if they helped you up, you would go beyond them. And they can't have that. And this might happen with your friends. This might have happened with other people as well, That, that like significant relationships or uh, significant other relationships, that is, where you had a male or a female that was really close to you and you were intimate with in your life and turned out to be a soul-sucking machine. These are the kinds of people that, if you move a certain way and you show that you're worth something more than what you're, you're actually going to be, uh, like in the now, you're, you're actually becoming something more, they can't stand to see it. And their biggest fear is for you to actually <laughs> become that person. I can't tell you how many women I've seen in my life over the last few years that have rejected me when I was in my early 20s. And my late teens, as a matter of fact, too, because I was still in college at the time. And they rejected me then. And now, whoa, 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 oh, oh, hey, how are you? 
all the fake femininity comes into play, all of the fake niceness. It is unbelievable how, <laughs> how fast somebody can change their opinion about you when they start to see that, oh, you're riding the wave. And they'll want to ride the wave with you. But as soon as <laughs> you, you, you're off that wave, maybe you're waiting for another wave to come. You know, you're, you're out there on the ocean. You rode that wave pretty good. And, you know, there's only so much that you can surf on until the wave kind of begins to die down a little bit. But as soon as that wave goes away, oh, they're gone. They just vanish. And you know what I've also noticed is what's crazy is when you give encouragement to other people, you're there for them. You want to be there for them. They ask you for advice. <laughs> you tell them the truth. Some of these people cannot even handle the truth. They can't. They don't want to accept that they have to actually work to get to where they want to be. They don't, ex they don't want to accept that it actually is going to take some effort into seeing the vision play out through execution. You can have all the plans and the visions in the world, but if you don't know how to execute, you're not going to really get anywhere. So it's just so, it's just so profoundly precarious of a situation that we are in, in today's day and age, because everybody's a freaking liar, it seems. Everybody is a liar. They're all freaking faking what, whatever it is kind of game they're playing. It's like everybody just wants to use each other at this point. Men and women want to use each other for like a psychological masturbation. And then they don't even want to have an actual relationship Family is being completely destroyed into the ground. Family is no longer valued. And for all of the haters that commented on my video from last week about nearly all men wanting to or tell me not to get married. I was just speaking the facts like you all can think what you want. You all can do what you want. You can you can persecute and think what you will. I don't really care. But to really apply character assassinations and ad hominems to situations, it doesn't do anything but make you makes you look like you cannot stand fervently in your own center so that you have to project on to other people that are speaking the truth, things that you don't like because you don't like it, you're going to you're going to ostracize them. All because somebody says something and you don't like it, even if it's a, just a fact. I didn't even say my opinion necessarily. I just said that this is what the facts are and this is what the facts lay out. It's it's so incredible to me how how quick people are to make just rapid judgment after rapid judgment after rapid judgment. Meanwhile, they can't look themselves in the mirror and think to themselves, okay, well, what do I need to do? I do that every single day. Do you know what I have on my mirror? I have, you are available to die. Earn your sunrise written on my mirror. Because I know that every day is a gift from God. And I know that every day I have to go out and I have to perform. I have to actually create something of value, else people will not care who the f*** I am. And that's just the reality as a man. That's just the reality of the situation. Women, they don't, they don't create anything. They copy and they multiply. And that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying that they don't create anything. Have you ever noticed that, men? <laughs> like most of these women, they just repeat like a parrot certain phrases or things and... Uh, they're never creating anything. It's always copying or multiplying. And God made them that way. I, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, we are the creators. We are the leaders. We have to be that. We have to run the shit around here. We have to be the lions that are patrolling our territory. That are willing to fight to the death if need be. We've got to be prepared for war. We've got to make sure that we're highly educated in the nuanced things of life. And we've got to really understand 
and have the passion to move forward with zest and vigor. And if that's not going to be an option for you, then <laughs> you're on the wrong channel, bro. <laughs> you're just on the wrong channel. And so if you actually listen to what I'm saying, because by the end of that video, I said that I think family is something that we ought to value. And then I had people, <laughs> I had people telling me that I'm not really a godly man. And I, how can I follow Christ, but not value, uh, not value marriage. And it's like, I never said I didn't value marriage. I never said that. And yet people are, this is what happens. This is what happens. People are going to be so determined to look at your life and misconstrue your words. But guess what? I've got in my soul, I've got a permanent smile. I never have to cry over any comment or lose any sleep over any comment. Even, even out and about in my community, anybody that knows what it's like to truly be hated not just by like one person, but like a group where a group of people are actually targeting you and putting a smear campaign, trying to damage your reputation, trying to inflict any kind of psychological warfare and spiritual warfare onto you because they can't stand to see you being the person that God created you to be. Those are the like people that know what that's like. They don't hate people because they know that it's not going to solve anything. I know that hating people or wishing ill will on people is not going to solve anything. But I will tell you this. I will pray for my enemies to have shame and fear and trembling so that they grow closer to God. And that's not my vengeance. I'm not actively trying to pray for their downfall necessarily. I'm praying that they grow closer to God by actually acknowledging what they're feeling inside. Do you know what? Anybody that understands what it's like to truly be close to Christ and to follow Christ, they understand that depression and anxiety, it doesn't fucking exist. It doesn't exist. That is an illusion in your mind. Okay? That is an illusion. And to think that you're depressed because of this or you're anxious because of that, Remember what depression is, is you're living in the past. Anxiety is you're living in the future. When you are depressed, what you really are is you're not focused on executing the vision that you are supposed to have, if you have a vision at all. If you're anxious, you're not remembering what you've done and what you've created, and you are letting the psychological what-ifs perpetuate your mind so much so that you become almost immobilized. You're stagnant. You're stagnant because of all the thinking and the feeling. Sometimes the best thing to do is to just do things. Whenever I'm feeling anxious or anything like that, which again, doesn't even really exist, but if that's what you want to call it, when your nervous system is just on high alert, Whenever I know that my nervous system is on high alert, I know that I just need to do something. Is, is everything clean in my house? Because the devil loves to, to come in when things are dirty. So I'll, I'll make sure that everything's cleaned up. And I'm already pretty tidy. But I'll just re, re-ensure that everything is solid. Everything is good. Everything is fine. And funnily enough... Funnily, is that even a word? Who cares? You guys get what I'm saying. Funnily enough, when I actually do something, I start to get a clarity of mind. I start to get, okay, all right, now I know what I really need to do. Because it's always better to take action, especially as a man. It's always better to take action than to not take action at all. Because if you're just going to sit there and wallow in your suffering, like... If you're younger than 18, it might be understandable. But once you become 18 or older as a man, that stuff is really unacceptable. It really is. And I say this because I was also that kind of person up until I was about 21, 22. I was that kind of person that would be wallowing in suffering, wallowing in my own pain sometimes. And 
I have completely destroyed that version of myself. Now, that does that does that mean that it's possible for him to come back or a new version of that person to come back? It's all, it's absolutely possible. Our sins are never really gone. Okay? We 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 live with our sins continually. But that doesn't mean that we have to like we're going to be re- in repentance for the rest of our lives. And when I say repent, I don't necessarily mean in the religious sense. This is another misconception that I wish and I hope that everybody that watches these videos understands. I'm not religious. I don't know who the f- think like <laughs> I don't know where you all get that idea from. I'm not religious at all. I'm ritualistic, okay, but I follow Jesus. I am not religious. Not in any sense of the word. So whoever thinks that I'm religious, like y'all need to, y'all need to watch these videos through rather than just watch a minute or so, make a judgment and call it good. Like, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Man, y'all are, y'all are fun, funny and goofy. Y'all are funny and goofy. Those kinds of people that do that. And then you've got the weird watchers. Man, I'm just on, I am, we're going full fledged. <laughs> you got the creepy watchers, the people that will watch your, watch your stuff, watch your stories, you know, they'll, they'll spy on your Snapchat story or whatever it is that you've got going on. I really don't recommend using Snapchat by the way, but for the sakes of this, this, uh, this conversation here, they'll watch your Instagram stories, whatever it is, they'll do this and yet they won't say anything. They won't like anything. Those are freaking creeps, man. Those are creeps. If you're going to watch somebody continuously, or you're going to you're going to be peeping in on their life, you best you best interact and at least show your support or something. And I would rather have people dislike a video or dislike something or like leave something negative, of course, than to just be a creep and watch it just to watch it. Because at least if you if you show me some kind of energy like that at least i can use your hate for energy i can use that hate for fuel just like we're doing right now we're we're just going right now so this is just what it means to to really put the truth at the forefront right you're speaking the truth into existence you're bringing the pain and not because you really want to but because Somebody's got to tell the truth around here. And Jesus was the prime example of that. Jesus didn't give a crap what the, what the other people were thinking. He, he straight up called the Pharisees, the religious leaders at the time, hypocrites to their face. According to the scripture. So, all of the hypocrites, all of the naysayers, all of the haters... Use those motherfuckers for fuel, man. Man, woman, whoever's watching this. Use that for fuel. Get fired up. And this is what I've begun to realize. You have to let your anger drive you in a way where you can transmute that energy into positive energy. This this energy right here is being transmuted into positive energy. Because I've got shit to do. I've got a plan to focus on. And it's helpful to see the kind of feedback that I can get, whether it's good or bad. But really, you've got to stay continuing on who you are, what you're about. Because if you can understand the history of what, where you are, but still know what you're about, you're going to be solid. So with that being said, peace be with you all. Until next time.